Confronting Sensitive Issues To resolve certain problems, spiritual leaders must communicate with everyone in a local church. Here's Gene. When we read this letter that Paul wrote to Philemon, he demonstrated this principle beautifully when Paul was writing. He developed tremendous uh, sensitivity, but he also was very interested in communicating with everyone who needed to understand the problem, the sensitive issue. This was one of Paul's prison epistles, and you remember there were four. There was Ephesians, which was to a church in Ephesus, but it was probably a circular letter to the other churches in Asia. He wrote to the Philippians while he was in prison. This was his first imprisonment in Rome. He wrote to the Colossians, and then he wrote to Philemon. Now, the interesting thing is Philemon lived in Colossae. So you have a letter during those two years that Paul wrote to the larger church at Colossae, But we also have this letter that he wrote to one individual in the church in Colossae. And so here is the beginning of that letter, which indicates that there was sensitivity here and knowledge and a, a great relationship with Philemon and his family. So here's what we read in the greeting. Uh, Philemon, verses 1 to 3. Paul a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Now remember, he was in his own hired house for two whole years in Rome. That was his first imprisonment. This was before he was released and then went back into the second imprisonment. So that was that two-year window where he was writing these four letters. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, and obviously Timothy was there, with Paul, helping him, encouraging him, serving him. And then he says to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker. So that indicates that the Apostle Paul knew Philemon. Timothy knew Philemon. And then he says to Apphia, our sister. Apphia was probably Philemon's wife. And you can get a feel of that as you read the whole letter. That's probably who she was. And then he says to Archippus, our fellow soldier, there are some who believe that this was Philemon's son. We can't prove that, but that is the implication. And then he says, and to the church that meets in your home. In other words, Philemon had a home in which the believers met, which was probably one home in Colossae where believers met, house churches, just like in Jerusalem or in Ephesus. And we know that Colossae was a very large city at one time. So there was a potential of a lot of believers at this particular time. And so he extends the greeting and says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the interesting thing is that Paul had not visited this church, but he knew Philemon. Now, how did he get to know Philemon if he had never visited this church? Well, here is the speculation, and I think it's really good speculation. Paul may have actually led Philemon and his wife to Christ in Ephesus. And the reason we speculate that is that people from all over Asia, and Colossae was a city in Asia, would go to Ephesus, which was a huge metropolis. This map shows you that it was um, approximately 125 miles from Colossae to Ephesus. And as you continue to look at that map, you'll see these other churches in Asia, such as Smyrna, Pergamum, and Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. These are not mentioned in the book of Revelation as the churches of Asia, but Colossae was also a church of Asia. So it's possible that Philemon and his wife, and maybe his family, would go to Ephesus on a regular basis. Now, that was true of all the churches of Asia. They would go to Ephesus. Why? To shop, because it was a huge, huge city. 
They would go there for entertainment. They would go there to worship in the temple of Diana and uh, just to recreate, to visit the spas and the baths and all of that. And the possibility is, here's the theory, and I think it can be substantiated, that on one of these trips, they heard about this man, Paul, who was teaching in the school of Tyrannus. And you remember that he went to the school of Tyrannus and he taught every day for two years. And we read about this in the book of Acts. For example, here's a picture of what they believe was the school of Tyrannus and Paul's daily ministry in this school. This went on for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. So potentially, that's where Philemon and his family heard the word of the Lord and came to Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, we know that there was a very significant relationship here. And you see this in Paul's personal prayers as he continues following the greeting in the introduction of the letter. He said, Philemon, I always thank my God when I mention you in my prayers. That's a relationship. <laughs> he knew Philemon, never been to Colossae, but he knew this man and his family. Because I hear of your love for all the saints and the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm thrilled that you're growing in Christ and you're ministering to people. I pray that your participation in the faith may become effective through knowing every good thing that is in us for the glory of Christ. Now, that's a very subtle statement, but he's laying the groundwork for something he's going to say to Philemon about glorifying Christ in a way that Philemon wasn't anticipating. He goes on to say, For I have great joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. Now, later in the letter, Paul is setting the stage for something he's going to request later in the letter. But before we look at the request, let me give you some background. And that is that after Philemon and his household, and in that culture included his slaves, a lot of them became believers, the slaves as well, and one of those slaves was named Onesimus. Onesimus rejected the gospel, which was unusual because the slaves would really literally follow anything their master did, but not Onesimus. He probably stole money. He used the new freedom that he had, stole money, left, and ended up, would you believe, in Rome, which is many, many miles away. And in God's providence, he met the Apostle Paul, who was a prisoner in his own hired house, and the Apostle Paul led him to Christ. And so Paul is writing to Philemon now with a very specific, sensitive request. And here it is in verses 15 to 16. For perhaps this is why he, that is Onesimus, was separated from you for a brief time, so that you might get him back permanently, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly loved brother. In other words, Paul had led this man to Christ. And then Paul said, he, that is Onesimus, this now converted slave, he is especially so to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Now, you can imagine the shock this was to Philemon. You see, here's the issue. Here was the problem. And Paul is aware of this. If Philemon welcomed Onesimus back without enforcing a penalty... What about the other slaves in his household? Serious issue. Here's another question. What about other slaves in the church in Colossae? Another question. What about the impact in the larger pagan community and the potential persecution that would result? See, Paul is aware of all these issues. And you're going to see he incorporates that information 
into this letter as we continue to unfold it. I wanted to jump ahead to show you that the purpose in writing this letter was a very sensitive request. We'll fill in the blanks on that as we move into another principle, but you see, this helps us understand when Paul wrote this greeting right from the beginning, why he addressed the whole church. Not the church only in his house, but the whole church, because this is a sensitive issue. This also explains why he addressed the letter to Apphia, probably Philemon's wife, because if she weren't informed on this whole situation, Philemon's going to have a big problem. Because you see, many wives in the New Testament world, when they had slaves, she really gave supervision to all the slaves. How's she going to respond to the fact that Onesimus stole money, left, and betrayed them, took advantage of the freedom? She needs to be informed, so he includes her. And if indeed um, this is a reference, uh, Archippus, if this is a reference to his son, he includes him as well. It helps us to understand what Paul's doing. He's got a tremendous communication issue here, dealing with a very prominent businessman in the city of Colossae, who's over a house church, whose slave, and everyone would have known, had betrayed them, who had left, and they had no word about what happened. So you can see the sensitivity that Paul's dealing with. And as we unfold the letter more, you'll see how uh, this really um, helps us to gain understanding into why Paul had to deal with this in a very sensitive way. But here's a question for reflection and response. What personal issues are there today that may need to be addressed in the larger Christian community? What issues should be dealt with individually and resolved at that level of communication? And I make reference to a verse of Scripture that Jesus quoted when he said that if you are offended by someone, you go to that individual. If they won't listen, you take two or three. If they won't listen, you take it to the church. And you need to understand there that the word ecclesia for church was used in the New Testament world for just any assembly. And there he's probably referring to the assembly of the elders. Not the whole church, but the assembly of elders. In fact, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Sanhedrin, which was 70 men who oversaw all the affairs of Israel in Jerusalem, is where they were headquartered. They're called the assembly, the ecclesia. They're actually called that. In Ephesus, the assembly, the pagan assembly that met because of the tremendous riot they had, they're called the ecclesia, the assembly. So we need to be very careful how we use the word church. And when Paul said, take it to the church, he was probably referring to the assembly, that is, of the spiritual leaders. Now, in answering that question, any issue that affects the whole congregation, the whole congregation needs to be informed in some sensitive way. Now, in this situation, Paul had no recourse but to address the whole assembly. Ultimately, he begins with Philemon, but ultimately it's going to affect that whole church because of the cultural dynamics regarding slavery. So that had to go to the whole community. But most of the problems we face today don't have to go to the whole community. They just need to be dealt with at a personal level and even a protective level. And there are a lot of churches that get in difficulty because they misinterpret that. So in answer to the question, most issues can be resolved one-on-one -on -one or a small group or the elders. Now, if it's a scandal or something of that nature, then it has to be dealt with with the whole assembly or the whole church. So here's the principle um, that we've dealt with, first of all, coming out of Paul's letter to Philemon. To resolve certain problems, spiritual leaders must communicate with everyone in a local church.